In this video, I'll share some things I found out accidentally while researching and writing this handbook. I had an initial interest in investigating memes for an ethics and conduct handbook in order to mine persuasive language from them. I also thought that memes seemed like an easily accessible source of data to qualitatively evaluate societal values. The more I looked at memes and read about ethics, it dawned on me that memes express virtues, not merely values, and that memes are everywhere, constantly reminding society how to behave. I clandestinely snapped pictures of mass-produced wall art at a Hobby Lobby located near Texas A&M University to capture memes that resonate with residents enough that they'd hang them in their homes. An article in My Modern Met cataloged 16 textual memes that El Royal Mexican Restaurant in Austin, Texas displayed daily on their marquee during COVID-19 lockdowns. An informal qualitative analysis showed that these memes all extolled being content with who you are, being humble, not thinking more highly of yourself than you should, being hopeful and expectant, being patriotic, specifically in terms of honor and loyalty, valuing, valuing your community, family, and friendships, and embracing imperfections and unrefined qualities in people and circumstances. These qualitative categories sounded a lot like being gracious. James Strong's Concordance of the Bible provides two root words, in six derivative words for grace in Greek. The most well-known root word being charis. Strong also provides 21 words in Hebrew that are used to construct an equivalent concept to charis. In Greek and Hebrew, the words used to describe grace are cheerfulness, goodness, thanks, favor, benevolence, to take up someone else's cause, to be willing to grant a favor, to show mercy, to bow, to stoop in kindness to an inferior, to pitch your tent next to someone else's, to make well, to be content, voluntary goodwill. The most unexpected word used in Hebrew for grace is shalom. Some Christians will recognize shalom as a word meaning peace. To act with grace is to create peace. Then I read in a scholarly article titled The Amplifying and Buffering Effects of Virtuousness on Downsized Organizations that in workplaces, virtue is more important than ethics. The author, Bright, and his co-authors called virtue a positive deviance from ethics. In other words, virtue was an even higher aim than being ethical. Bright listed the following as concepts as being virtues, hope, humility, modesty, integrity, kindness, and virtuous purpose. Grace fit perfectly into the company of the other values in Bright's list, and all of Bright's virtues sounded quite reminiscent of the messaging compiled in my Hobby Lobby and El Arroyo meme archives. I moved away from looking at memes as simply sources of cultural research and began to embrace them as rhetoric. I observed how the medium that transmits memes is part of their impact. A handbook is the opposite of a meme in terms of genre, style, and medium, but both are making persuasive arguments regarding what actions and abstentions should be considered common sense in good ethical conduct. I realized if I was going to accomplish what I had set out to do, that is to use memetic language to write an ethics handbook for professionals in Texas that would be persuasive, not just prescriptive, I was going to have to play with the limits of both genres. 
memes and handbooks. I have attempted to deconstruct both genres, visually, linguistically, and technically, and then to reconfigure their isolated features together in a way that makes their individual components more obvious. I hope to have successfully showcased the power of memes as virtue teaching rhetorical devices by pasting meme parts and handbook pages into this YouTube scrapbook. In this YouTube book, I am also incidentally experimenting with whether a meme's linguistic potency remains if you set the components of the meme into the strictures of logical discourse, and if the meme's meaning still translates when it is spoken to a recipient rather than read. Mixing the mediums of print publication and social media platform, interweaving the fragmented language pieces of episteme with long-form argumentation, and tampering with the sensory delivery of the messaging has been a fun way to explore the meme. The meme is what I consider to be the preferred device chosen by a postmodern generation for teaching society what to value, what is virtue, and how to be, like an ethics and contact handbook should do. So my question was, how do leaders in Central Texas persuade their stakeholders not just to adhere to an organizational handbook of social rules, but to buy in to cultures of grace that are promoted by ethics and conduct policies? The answer, hashtag with memes. <laughs>